All right, I've had to record this about three or four times, but hey, welcome to the week 11 preview for college football. As we all know, there is no ranked versus ranked teams this week. There's no ranked versus ranked top 25 matchups this week, but there is going to be some intrigue anyway, you know. Keep your eyes, you know, we got another Friday night game for top 10 teams. Cincinnati, dominant defense, Desmond Ritter. You know, the run game has been looking very strong for Cincinnati. They're taking on East Carolina. Should be interesting to see how that goes as Cincinnati continues their quest for potentially a top four spot. Yes, I said top four. They are in contention for a national championship. All they have to do is keep on winning. Marshall's taking on Middle Tennessee. Um, there's nothing really I can say about this matchup. Same thing with West Carolina taking on Liberty. Liberty taking on an FCS opponent. Um, as long as Liberty keeps winning, they have another. They have a big chance for a big game later down the line, uh, as we've already talked about with Coastal Carolina, who coincidentally is taking on Troy on the road. I wonder how that's going to go out there in Alabama. You know. Coastal's looking very, very interesting. Still undefeated, 7-0. And there's just a lot. There's just a lot to say, you know, about this Coastal team that just looks pretty pretty good. They look pretty good when I saw them in the second half against Georgia Southern a couple weeks ago. Louisiana, um, well, it's not Louisiana Lafayette anymore. You know, they'll, 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 they'll get, they'll, you know, the fans of that school will get on you about that. They're taking on South Alabama, who basically got blown out by Coastal Carolina last week. Lafayette only has, uh, excuse me, Louisiana only has one loss, and that was to Coastal Carolina. They, they, they're back in the top 25. Good for them. As long as they keep winning, it'll be Coastal Carolina versus Louisiana in the Sun Belt Championship in December. Georgia's out of the college football playoff. There's no reason to talk about them. They are taking on Missouri. Missouri has been kind of a punching bag all season long, so there's no point in trying to talk about this game. But we do need to keep our eyes on these two games, however, for these top ten teams, and that is Miami taking on Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech is pissed. They are angry. They know they should have won that game against Liberty last week, but Instead, just went they decided to call a timeout, and the team lost. They lost to another top twenty-five team. So, so it's been rough for Virginia Tech against the top twenty-five because they got basically blown out by North Carolina. And I forgot what their other loss was. I don't know if they lost to Clemson or not. No, wait, they play Clemson later. But Miami, if they they have to. They have to get a complete game out here. They only have one loss. That is the interesting part. But there's they're they're not in the thick of things just yet. They need Notre Dame and Clemson to start losing games. And I don't know if that's going to happen right now. What what Miami can do is boost themselves up with the win against Virginia Tech. In the meantime, Indiana, Michael Phoenix Jr. He's been playing great. Indiana undefeated, number 10 in the country against the Michigan State team that is kind of up and down. You know, I'm not sure Rocky Lombardi's still starting. They do have Ricky White out there at wide receiver. You know, and Michigan State has to, they have to get all the pieces together if they want to upset the number 10 team in the country. Otherwise, things aren't going to be interesting for very long because I think Indiana Indiana looks pretty good so far. I mean, I haven't seen them in action yet, but they are undefeated. They're, in the, they're the top 10 team. I mean, what can you say about that? What can you say about that? You know? And then we move on to the 330, 230 games. Not a lot here to be completely honest with you, uh, uh, once again, you know, it's just another, it's, it's, it's a light week 
you know, it's usually one of these weeks in November gets pretty light, but it's it's rough, you know, as far as conference matchups go. So first off, we already saw USC last week take on Arizona State. They're taking on Arizona this week, who hasn't played a game yet. They'll be on the road. Um, if, if USC loses this game, that is it for them. That is it. That is all I can say about USC. I don't know anything about Arizona yet because, I mean, they haven't even played yet. But USC has got to pick up the pace if they want to keep their hopes alive. Their very slim hopes of a college football playoff, you know, spot alive. Because their hopes are very slim, you know, in the Pac-12 right now. Meanwhile, Talia Tagovailoa, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, but who cares, takes undefeated Maryland. That's right, undefeated Maryland. You know, they go, they stay right at home, and who comes in town, the number three team in the country, Justin Fields led, Ryan Day coached, Ohio State Buckeyes. Man, oh man, oh man. Going to be interesting to see how Ohio State can handle Maryland. If, if this game gets out of hand early, I'd say switch to the USC game or one of these other games I'm about to talk about here. Maryland has to keep this close. If they can't keep this close, then I don't know what to tell you. In the meantime, Texas A&M, number five in the country now. And yes, I know, right? Number five team in the country. They only lost to Alabama. Crazy, right? Um, they're taking on Tennessee. I mean, it's Tennessee. They, you know, the Volunteers haven't looked too great, you know, all season long. Texas A&M, they, they have all the pieces there, but can they get it done? Can they keep the momentum going? To be able to be a top five team, they gotta keep this up. It's very simple. They gotta keep this up if they want to get themselves in. Because there's probably no way that they beat out Alabama. There's 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 just no way. They have to have Alabama lose a couple games to be able to get to the SEC championship. And speaking of Alabama, number one Alabama. Again, we're back to number one Alabama. Again, it got a football. Thanks, Clemson. Thanks. But they are taking on LSU. LSU beat them last year. Of course, that was a magical run by LSU last year. But LSU this year, not very good. Under 500. Defense, terrible. Alabama's defense has been hit or miss at times for me. But this this should be a blowout. Alabama should easily take care of of the Tigers out in Death Valley. Auburn's back in the rankings. I know, right? They're taking on the fighting Mike Leeches and, you know, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State who, after winning against LSU, has dropped a bunch of goose eggs. You know, they have looked horrid. And Auburn has looked horrid in their, in several games. In fact, they should have lost three games by now. We're not going to talk about that. So that was old news. But, you know, Auburn, you know, it, it, it's probably another resume booster for Alabama, I'm presuming, to keep them in the top 25 because they do not look like a top 25 team. They do not look like a top 25 team. Notre Dame. What about the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame? They're taking on Boston College, a team that has blown it several times against ranked top 10 opponents. They blew it against Clemson. They blew it against North Carolina. Please don't blow this one. Do not blow this game wide open, you know, for Notre Dame. And Notre Dame's defense is very good, even though they allowed 40 points to Clemson last week. But that was a heavyweight title fight, honestly. If Notre Dame, you know, keeps the defense that has been, you know, Aside from the Clemson game, they keep that defense that's been looking very, very good up. They should be able to take care of Boston College. Very simple. And if Boston College gets out to a lead, they have to hold it. They have to hold the lead this time. So, 
two, so the top top five are in action, you know, at some point throughout the day, you know, in this um, 3.30 to 7 o'clock time frame, if you live on the East Coast, of course, and, you know, traps are set up around them, there's going to be hell to pay if the top five teams start losing. But who? But we might not see that, you know. We might not at all. Then you know. Lastly, but not least, don't forget it's not the worst thing in the world to see here, and that is some good games at the um, at the later hours of the day. You know, the number six team in the country, Florida, taking on Arkansas again. They Arkansas has been kind of scrappy. They've been they've been they've been interesting. You know, they they didn't look the greatest when I tried to see them against Texas A and M because I mean that game got out of hand quick. But if Arkansas can limit Florida, they can limit Kyle Trask. You know, I'm not sure about Pitts though. I'm not sure if he's playing for Florida. You know, because he got hurt against Georgia. But um, if Arkansas can play some defense, they have a chance. They can get the offense going. They have a chance. I do know a coach has tested positive for COVID. I'm not sure which coach on Arkansas tested positive, but he has tested positive for COVID. So what about the Wisconsin Badgers? Will they even play against Michigan? I don't know. This game really lost its luster. When Michigan lost two straight games, you know, to Michigan State and to Indiana, basically getting blown out by Indiana. If Wisconsin and Michigan can play, then that's great. But Wisconsin has had some trouble with COVID. And, you know, if Wisconsin, you know, can win this game against Michigan, they have, you know, more of a chance to get to that, to get to the, um, to the Big Ten championship game. But all Wisconsin has to do is just clear COVID. They have to clear COVID out because it's been 21 days since they've last played. SMU taking on a tricky Tulsa team. Do not count that Tulsa team out, even though, you know, they've had some games where they, you know, they, they should have lost. They should have lost that East Carolina game. Tulsa should have. SMU just has to keep the momentum going. Again, it's going to be... Hopefully, it's going to hopefully be Cincinnati SMU in the American Championship game. All SMU has to do is keep winning, keep, you know, Shane Bouchelle has to keep throwing touchdowns, you know, the wide receivers have to keep catching balls and stuff like that, and the defense has to play a little bit better. They want to hang with Cincinnati. So there's that. Oregon, Washington State. I watched Washington State late. That's right, Pac-12 After Dark came back. There are three Pac-12 After Dark games this week, so thanks, Fox, for shifting You know that Utah-UCLA game. I don't know how that's going to go with Pac-12 After Dark, but we'll see throughout the week, of course. We're Oregon taking on Nick Rolovich, Jade DeLora, who, uh, a freshman quarterback for Washington State, and that, and that run and shoot. Boy. It is so fun to watch the run and shoot in action, let me tell you. Oregon has to, you know, keep four wide receivers. They're going to have to play dime the entire game, I'm telling you. Because it's four, four to five wide receivers out there all the time in a run and shoot offense. And, you know, Rolovich likes to run the ball. So, and Laura, he, he looked pretty good, you know, against Oregon State. But that was Oregon State, you know. They're, they're pushovers. This is a real test for the Cougs against the Ducks. The Ducks can win this game. They keep their they keep their hopes, you know, for the Pac-12 championship alive, and it could be, you know, Oregon USC in the Pac-12 championship game, as long as those two teams keep winning. And last but not least, a game of the week that didn't even look like a game of the week at first, but hey, it is now Purdue. Undefeated, Northwestern, 23-ranked team in the country, undefeated. How in the world will this game go? Because I have seen neither of these teams play yet. I have not seen these teams play yet. 
I'm going to watch this game. All I can tell you is that, hey, whoever comes out of this game, you know, victorious, has a big shot in the Big Ten West to keep their projections going, to keep their traje- trajectory on tap for an appearance in the Big Ten Championship. Because Wisconsin's having some trouble playing, and all the other teams, you know, in the conference, have, I think they've lost. You know, Iowa's lost, Illinois has lost, of course. You know, um, Nebraska's lost. Minnesota's lost a couple games, so yeah, Northwestern, Purdue, very exciting game. But of course, like I said, three Pac-12 after dark games for you on Saturday night, and a Mountain West after dark as well, I think. So, a a, a quiet looking week in college football, but do not think it's going to be quiet. There is going to be some loud, There's it's going to be loud if there's some upsets. So, we'll see you Saturday or Sunday, you know, for the um, recap for week 11. We'll see how, you know, the top 25 handles all these unranked matchups. We'll see. See you then, everybody.